Halfway into my phone interview with Kazu Makino, the main voice behind art rock band Blonde Redhead, I was not surprised to hear the tortured artist confess her shyness. Uh, yeah, I don't really confide with people that well. <laughs> I might have been able to guess that. <laughs> Today you have to like tell myself, Kazu, you have to speak, you have to speak, you have to speak, you have to talk to someone. Just call anyone, just speak to someone, so you can't keep it all to yourself. Fans of the trio, made up of Kazu Makino and Berkeley grads Simon and Amadeus Pace, are at first hesitant to embrace the effort, an especially difficult to finish eighth studio release, Penny Sparkle. I'm feeling a little bit guilty about making this album, because maybe it's going to take a little bit for people to, how do you say, uh, get used to the music that we made. The music here takes us through a journey to overcome feelings of isolation and vulnerability. I'm actually quite intrigued by our music. You go through this journey that's like you you really fight with yourself and we fight. You 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 become completely suspicious of your of your limits and sensibility, and then and you go through this long process of like self doubt, and then you come out again. It's like you, you have this like kind of silly realization that everybody's going to listen to this. Publishing aspects of personal darkness is nothing new for any artist, but for this lead singer, getting it on paper is especially healing. It's like really a blessing, but you know, it's you have all this awful, well, not awful, but like it's true, like sort of draining emotions inside, and then you know um, when you actually to write the song from those things, you just in time you kind of save yourself by having a song. She's admitted before a struggle to feel alive and here she's very open about eerie sounding feelings of disassociation. I feel open that I'm not in charge of my own self. That there's actually an operator that's operating me rather than me doing things, you know, even if I go through all these things, they cry, hide, whatever, I feel like it's somebody's sort of uh, allowing me to be that way, except, except for I, when I like horses. Her horses often inspire music, lyrics, and video imagery on blonde redhead albums, and here, the title. But she talks about her friends just as much and wishes on them the protection and comfort she herself craves. I have so many friends that really, I really like and I fancy. And, but you know, when you really appreciate people, like you can't really invade their space either, you know? And we all, I think, go through moments that like, I'm not made for this world, like, you know? And I think lots of my friends cannot carry that aura of like <laughs> it's not made for this world but I just like to kind of help protect him or, or feel protected with my music or something A nostalgic tribute to her friends back home the song My Plants Are Dead borrows from a text message conversation she had with one friend in particular about back home stuff They'd be like, oh, give okay, you your key, your plants are dead. Um, and then they always talk about what you've been listening to, and you know, how's your dog, and can yes. come on tour with you. You know, that kind of thing. I wanted to see who she'd blame in particular for letting her plants die while she's away. All of them. <laughs> all, like, assassins. They all, like, they can massacre my plants. I think... It seems to be that your plants know the owner, your mom. <laughs> it just has to be you that waters them. Like, they all just, without exception, they all die. That's right? so funny. <laughs> and it's moments like these that wreak havoc in all my preconceived notions of a tortured soul. 
her lightheartedness is especially entertaining because of its contrast to her equally observant thoughts and lyrics about pain and confusion. It seems like the songs on this album require a certain amount of anguish or melancholy to perform accurately. Like I think music, if it's successful, you know, you, you don't have to feel emotional in order to perform it. Like, because all the emotions are already built into the notes and chords and personalities. So you can just sing them and all the emotions are there already. You, know, you don't have to like work yourself up to it, you know? Yeah, of course, sometimes I do get like a little shaky about it, but most of the time it, it gives that kind of uh, dark emotions a little bit of a coating or like a strength. Like, so you're yeah, able to like perform it with, with this kind of a detachment, you know, and uh, it, that really helps. Of course, it's a powerful gift to be able to heal oneself and receive strength from creating music. And if the album those songs find their way onto is hard to get into at first, composer Stephen Sondheim would argue that's because it's unique, different enough from what we're used to hearing to require a bit of digging on our own part to uncover. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, you know, the, the journey that I have, you are having it in a sort of another form of different time. And maybe sometimes the point of the journey is simply the journey itself rather than the destination. Maybe we'll have a fine time not getting there. Kazu Makino from Blonde Redhead spoke to me in St. Louis during their fall 2010 tour. Their new album, Penny Sparkle, is in stores now. For St. Louis Public Radio, I'm Aaron Doyle.